life seems very fluid and, and you have to find where you are inside that day and find it truthfully. Recently, making art is actually defying death. <laughs> Bottom line. It's about staying alive. It's about refuting the doom and despondency and mediocrity of what goes on elsewhere. It's stubbornness. It's the need to make whatever it is. about life. There's so much passion involved in art. And the, 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 it's, it's, like, it's like it pulls my stomach there. Like, and my heart, my head and my whole body is moved into this process of making art. It's so passionate. And I'm breathless. I'm a child. I'm a breathless child. I've just you know, scored the winning goal at Wembley. Someone once told me that I was an English artist living in Jerusalem, and it's not true. I'm influenced by what's going on here. I'm contributing in whatever way to, to Israel, to Jerusalem. Uh, I'm influenced by the news. I'm influenced by the people. It's, uh, it's trying to be, at the moment, what I want it to be. Uh, the sculpture starts on the second. The first piece of steel is easy, the vertical, which is like my working place. So the second piece of steel is already the sculpture. At this stage, I can't wait the passion to make it and to have the material on in its place and have it finished is almost overwhelming. It's really consuming. It's a cauldron. It's like, it's like alchemy. And, and sometimes with, with art, you have this sort of alchemic mix of all these different materials and different ideas. And then suddenly, you produce something that is golden. Uh, and, and that's why art is as vibrant as it is and as an added bonus to be able to do it and doing it in Jerusalem which is the alchemic center of the world is remarkable so it's like working inside this passion inside this intensity and it's remarkable series of the fat man watching TV what's the, the fat up? man the, the this was the first this was the first of the fat man series which 
was in the newspaper that man had destroyed 40% of the insects of the world before he even knew that they existed. And it seemed such stupidity. It was like standing on his feet or standing on his hands and being stuck in that place, uh, not knowing how to get out of it. So this is him. There is so much pencil on it. I don't know whether you can see the reflection on the line, but it's, it's just so much graphic. And this is called Just Hanging On. And it's a, a sculpture I made. It's, a, it's an evolution of a sculpture I made in 1981, which was a man which was a man actually holding onto a rope. He was quite secure. Hmm. That was when I was 23. And now that some, some years later, I'm really holding on a yank. And that was how I put on weight. So it's very self-portrait. I did no research in coming to Israel at all. All I knew is that I had a friend in, it, in Jerusalem. And I rang my friend uh, Thursday afternoon. Uh, she said, come over Thursday later on in the day. And then we walked to a friend of hers who turns out to be my wife. And we were engaged within 18 hours of knowing each other. And I sold up in Scotland and moved here. I had no idea. It was, it was a miracle. It happens to people. This place does that to people. It's one of the things that Israel is remarkable. It does open your mind and open your heart to things way beyond yourself. And the fact that I have children, Israeli children, serving in the army, you know, supporting the country, deeply involved in what's going on in the country, I think it is like, ah, thank you. I mean, can you imagine being involved in England in the same way? It's not possible. But to be deeply involved in, in living in Israel, I think, is, is, hey, remarkable. Remarkable country. Remarkable, it, it, infuriating, ingenious. It, it's every adjective you could possibly imagine.